here we are working through a regression example. We will be using Excel in the moment. The data which we'll be using are in a spreadsheet called OCD Poverty XLSX. You can find a link to this data set in the notes to this video. The data which you will find, and you can quickly have a look, here's the spreadsheet. So the data we have in this spreadsheet is we're having Gini coefficients for each country, one for 2007, and then all our data are for the year 2019. Gini coefficients are a measure of um, inequality in, an, in a distribution here, the income distribution. We also have information on top 20% income shares. So for instance, in uh, Ireland, 38% of the overall income is earned by the 20% highest earners. We have percentage of child poverty. What's the percentage? Let's go back to the data description. What's the percentage of children living in poverty? However, that is defined. We're not going to talk about that here. You're also having a measure of health expenditure in the country as a percentage of GDP. When having a percentage of how rich or a measure of how rich the country is, GDP per capita and also using a measure of how much CO2 emissions are emitted by a country. So let's start with calculate the correlation between all of the 2019 variables. This is most effectively done by the correlation function in the Excel's data analysis tool pack. So let's switch over. The very first thing I do when I work with Excel, if this is a data sheet I have or data file I have is that I'll make sure I don't touch my original data. So one way to do that, you could either save as a new file or you could copy this and just put that into a new worksheet. And sometimes I call that working. So I copy the data here and that means I don't touch my original data because in Excel, some of the things you do may be non-reversible. So let's say we want the correlation between all of these variables. I So in the top right here, I can see in the data tab, a data analysis tool pack. If you can't see that, you need to go to file, options, add-ins, and manage Excel add-ins. And then there is this analysis tool pack. And if you don't have a tick, you tick it and then click OK. And then this should appear. So we'll call this. And we want correlations here. And what do we want correlations from? You highlight all the variables. And I want to illustrate a problem. I highlight all of the variables now. OK, that includes some missing observations here indicated by NAs. I'll say that. I want um, the output. So I highlighted the label, so I keep this box text. My output, I want to pl be plotted here. I press OK. You see, I get an error message. Input range contains non-numeric data. And that's because we have uh, some missing observations. We have some missing observations here, these NAs. So um, all we're going to do is we're just going to ignore that first column for the moment. So we calculate correlations. Um, now we want to only those because we have no missing observations in the other columns. Output range can stay the same. So, and what you get here is a basically what we sometimes call a correlation matrix. So you have all variables in the columns and the rows. Just this so and we can see the correlation between Gini and Gini is one the correlation between Gini and the top 20 income is 0.99 so they're very highly correlated they're both measures slightly different measures of uh, income distribution but it's a very high correlation so you see perhaps we don't get very much different information from them um, Gini and child poverty is also very highly correlated. More unequal countries have more child poverty, perhaps not so surprising. Uh, you can see that there's a negative correlation in this sample for the year 2019 between GDP per capita and Gini. So more unequal 
countries, higher Gini is correlated with lower GDP. So that means poorer countries tend to have higher inequality. And so all of these variables here describe correlations between the variables. Here, this one, for instance, is the correlation between child poverty and GDP per capita, the correlation between these two variables in our sample is negative 0.48. So again, richer countries have lower child poverty. So that was the first ask. Let's go to B. Produce a scatter plot that displays points for each country with GDP per capita on the horizontal axis and CP child poverty on the vertical axis. So when you produce scatter plots, you want to have control over which variables on the horizontal and on the vertical axis. The variables we are concerned about is child poverty and GDP per capita. When I produce scatter plots, what I often do is I just create a new worksheet. Let's call it plot. I copy the two variables across. Perhaps I also want the country information. Okay, now I have them next to each other. Now you can highlight these columns and we can go to insert and do a chatter plot, a scatter plot. Okay, and you see you get a, a scatter plot here. So what you get here on this occasion is a scatter plot which has on, we don't have access labels yet, but you can see from the numbers here, this one here is GDP. And this one here is child poverty. But we wanted it the other way uh, around. So what we're going to do, the, the way to achieve that in Excel is that we need to switch the columns around. Excel takes the lead on the order of this. The first column goes on horizontal axis, the second on the vertical axis. We want it the other way around, so I'll copy that paste it here and now I'll create a scatter plot for these variables. So highlight, go to insert, scatter, scatter plot. Here we go. Now we have child poverty on the vertical axis. Perhaps we want to add access titles for the horizontal and for the vertical axis. And so we know this is GDP per capita. And here we have child poverty. Poverty. Okay, so here we have a um, a useful scatter plot. And what do we see? What do we learn from this plot? Well, there seems to be some sort of negative correlation. That's not surprising because we found between GDP and child poverty, we found a negative correlation of negative. 0.48, if you were to fit a line of best fit into this plot, we would find this to have a negative slope. So, and what we're now going to do is we basically estimate a linear regression model for exactly these data. That is our next task, task C here. Estimate the following regression. Child poverty as dependent variable, GDP as an explanatory variable. And we want to interpret the results as we use the regression tool in the data analysis tool pack. We want to have a look out for a box called line fit plots. And we want to uh, tick that and see whether that gives us useful information. So let's go back. Well, you could actually, why don't we just stay in, uh, in this? So we reduce that a little bit it smaller because all the data are here in this little spreadsheet. So we go to data, data analysis, I'll get rid of this data analysis. Now we find regression. Here we go, regression. Our explained variable is going to be child poverty. The input variable is going to be GDP per capita. And we are using labels, we want our output to go here. And we want line fit plots. This is a little box I asked you to look out for. So here we go. Let's put actually that 
the graph up here, we put it next to the one which we previously created. I could be bigger here. Okay, so what you can now see is that basically we're having exactly the same plot GDP per capita on the horizontal axis, child poverty on the vertical axis, and we can see the same blue, uh, the same blue dots. But now we also have these orange dots here, and they are the values which are the predicted values from our regression model. Now, what did we do in our regression model? Well, we estimated a specification child poverty for country i is a function of a constant plus a slope coefficient times gdp per capita for country i then we had an error term or once we get sample estimates for these two coefficients we get an estimate for child poverty and it's that estimate which shows on that graph as these orange dots and if you were to connect these orange dots to a line that would be our line of best fit in the regression so the question is interpret interpret these coefficients so what we get here is our alpha naught hat this is this guy here alpha naught hat the estimated intercept which is 20.27 roughly plus Alpha 1 hat, that is this value here, alpha 1 hat, that is the estimated coefficient for GDP. So that's negative, actually it's a negative, not a plus. It's a negative 0 0.3015 times GDP per capita I. So that's a very small coefficient, but remember GDP per capita is a very large number. So how do we interpret these coefficients? Well, that constant here, the way how we interpret how we would interpret that is if there was a country with zero GDP per capita, what percentage of child poverty would we expect? That is sort of it's called the intercept because it's sort of this point here at zero GDP per capita. But zero GDP per capita, we don't have a country that has zero GDP per capita. Um, we have some not so rich countries. So we could check here what is the poorest country here. I don't actually, no, I haven't checked that. Turkey is below 10,000. So that's one of the, uh, the poorer ones. Then here, India, that is the smallest, 2055. Okay, so since zero GDP per capita isn't in our sort of sample, we shouldn't really interpret that intercept. How do we interpret this value? Well, to expect that on average, as per capita uh, GDP increases by one unit, which is one dollar, on average, this is associated with an increase in child poverty of. 0.0015 so that's less or it's more than a hundredth of a percentage point but it's very it's very small our percentages are measured in full points so it's very very little but you could you could perhaps think about because a one dollar increase isn't very informative you see sort of our range here is you know from zero to 1400 so let's think about a perhaps a $10,000 increase, say from 20 to 30,000. So what we would do here is we would then multiply that coefficient with 10,000, okay, times 0 0.0015. So that means we're moving this four decimal points. So that would be 1.5. So that means a on average, as countries get richer by $10,000 GDP per capita a year, that is associated with a 1.5, that's a negative value here, so that's times a negative value, with a 1.5 percentage point decrease in child poverty. Uh, that's why we have this downward sloping line of best fit. So this is how we would interpret this coefficient. You would 
get exactly the same if you were to just rescale your variable GDP per capita to be measured in ten thousands. Then your coefficient should come out as negative 1.5. Let's see what our next task is. Interpret. So we've done that. In the sample, Luxembourg, Luxembourg has the highest GDP per capita. How does it fare with respect to child poverty? So let's go to uh, Luxembourg. Luxembourg is that country which has the highest. So this is Luxembourg, which has the highest GDP per capita, almost 120,000. Those of you who know your way around Europe, you know it's a sort of a fairly big financial center. It also has some sort of other institutions, a very small country. So you can see it's very rich, but it has quite substantial child poverty. Okay. So we could calculate here what the predicted, so let's see what is actually the predicted value of child poverty in, in Luxembourg. So how we would calculate that is we would go to our predicted model, which is the intercept plus that coefficient times the GDP per capita in Luxembourg, which is here. So what we get is 3.12. So given how rich the country is, using our estimated relationship, we would expect there to be a child poverty percentage of 3% approximately. But what we do find in Luxembourg, let me highlight that here, is actually a child poverty rate of 15%. Okay, so Luxembourg does much, much worse in terms of child poverty as uh, one would expect. When you see that, what you really would want to do is you want to figure out what's, okay, what's going on in Luxembourg. And I'm not an expert, this is just a question for you to spark your interest and, and try and figure that out. And perhaps Google find some information. Why is uh, child poverty relatively high in Luxembourg? So, next question. Estimate the following regression. So now we're estimating a multiple regression model. We again, we want to explain child poverty. So that's going to be our dependent variable. But now we use this explanatory variable GDP as before, but now also T20 and uh, the uh, health expenditure. All right, let's go to our data set. We'll go to the working where we have all of the data. We'll go to data, data analysis regression. So our exp the variable we want to explain is child poverty. And now we want T20, health expenditure and GDP. Now, these variables are not next to each other. So unfortunately, we can't use Excel in that way. What we have to do is we have to cancel that first, we have to move that T20 variable next to health expenditure and GDP. So we have them in one block. So we're going to do this by just inserting a new column. We'll copy that variable here. Now we have the three explanatory variable in one block. We can go back to our data analysis tool, regression. Um, we want to explain child poverty, variation in child poverty. We want to explain to be precise using these three variables. I keep the labels column ticked. Uh, we're having the line plots and we're plotting, plotting the output here. So here's our regression output. Move this a little bit across. So what do we see? here. Draw. So we're seeing here an, a number of things. Actually, before we do this, when we look at our original regression, what we did find here is that coefficient to GDP per capita, 
had a fairly large T statistic and a very small P value. So what that meant is that the null hypothesis that alpha one in the population was equal to zero tested against the alternative hypothesis that this coefficient in the population was unequal to zero, that null hypothesis was quite clearly rejected. Reject H naught as our p-value, the p-value, which was 0 0.00086 approximately, is smaller than, well, we hadn't set a significance level, of alpha, but any usual significance level, even like a 1% significance level, the p-value is smaller. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. So looking at this, there's clearly a correlation between GDP per capita and child poverty. Now let's look at our multiple regression model. What we now see here is we're having three coefficients Now, these tell us something about correlations between the dependent variable, which is still, remember, child poverty, but which is now explained as a function of three explanatory variables. It's delta zero plus delta one times that was GDP per capita. I'm just keeping the notation as in the question. Oh no, it wasn't delta, it was, um, it was gammas. Yeah. If I say I want to be consistent, then I should do exactly that. So we have the constant gamma zero plus gamma one times GDP per capita in country I plus gamma two times T20 in country I plus gamma three times the health expenditure in country I. And then once we get estimates for all of these, we get a prediction for child poverty. Now this was gamma zero hat, top 20 income, that was gamma two hat, then GDP, here we had gamma one hat, and this one here was uh, gamma three health expenditure, gamma three hat, these values. Now, if you look at the T statistics and the associated P values here, we can see that both health expenditure and GDP get very high P values. Okay, here we would not reject the null hypothesis that gamma one and gamma three are equal to zero in the population. Turns out that here, the only statistically significant coefficient is gamma two hat. Well, we had a p-value, very small p-value, very high T statistic. Okay, and here's our value. Now, why does this change? Okay, GDP per capita here is statistically insignificant in the univariate regression where we only had GDP per capita, it was significant. Well, because these variables are quite highly correlated, the top 20 income share, health expenditure and, health expenditure and GDP, as we had established up here in the correlation, um, in the correlation matrix. Let me highlight in green all of the correlations between these three variables. So top 20 GDP, that was the correlation with Gini, GDP, the correlation with health inequality and health inequality or top 20 with health is here. Okay, so there's, you know, quite substantial correlations between those. If you include variables which are correlated with each other, then you will find that the resulting regression coefficients will change compared to univariate regressions with the respective variables. And that is exactly as it should be, because what a multi multivariate, multivariate regression analysis tells you is what is the correlation with 
in the data. So for instance, what's the correlation between CP and uh, GDP? Assuming T20 and HE are constant, right? That's the Ceteris Paribus assumption. We're in interpreting this coefficient, the gamma one, is telling us how on average CP changes as GDP changes, keeping T20 and HE constant. And it turns out that keeping T20 and HE constant there is no correlation between CP and GDP. Equally, keeping T20 and GDP constant, changing HE is not correlated with a change in CP, because that's what this coefficient here, the HE coefficient, is also not statistically significant. However, keeping GDP and HE constant, there is significant variation between T20 and CP. That is why this coefficient, the gamma 2 coefficient, is statistically significant. Okay, so that is the value of running a multivariate regression analysis. So let's go back to our um, to our task. So this is why what we discussed here. Do these results change your earlier interpretation? So what we um, what we are now wanting to do, perhaps lastly, what we want to do is we have this one coefficient, this one here, which is estimated uh, with a value of 0 0.926. How would we interpret this coefficient? Well, keeping GDP and HE constant, if we had a one percentage point increase in the share of income for the top 20, we would expect roughly a one percentage point, because that value is close to one, or 0.926 percentage point increase in child poverty. So what that tells us is what we've seen before from the correlations that there is a positive correlation between the income share of the top 20 and child poverty. The bigger the income share of the 20% richest, the higher tends to be the percentage of child poverty. So lastly what we want to do is we want to calculate the change in the Gini coefficient between 2007-2019 we'll call this variable dg and then we estimate the regression model with that dg as an explained variable and gdp per capita and co2 emissions as an explained variable all right and then for, lastly, we're being asked, is there anything that worries you about this regression model? Which of the two variables is best dropped from the regression? So let's do that. Let's perhaps just because this spreadsheet is getting quite messy already, we do is we just copy all of this and we create a new worksheet okay so we do that so we want to calculate a new variable insert we call it dg the change in the Gini coefficient and that is that the 2019 value minus the 2007 value so calculate that you can see the countries well we don't have a 2007 value of course we can't calculate that uh, that change. So what we're going to do for this analysis is we're going to delete these countries. So we're losing Costa Rica, China, Russia, and South Africa from our sample. So we have DG here. I usually do once I calculated some values, I copy those, highlight that, control C for copy, and then I go to paste and I paste values. So now the formulas have disappeared and I just have these values. And now we wanted a regression. So we go to uh, data, data analysis, regression, input range, that is gonna be DG. 
explanatory variables are going to be GDP per capita and, and this. And the annual CO2 emissions, we want the output. Uh, why do we want the output? Let's put it here. And um, yeah, let's press OK and see what we get here. So here's our uh, regression analysis. So the change in inequality. So you see, for instance, let's see where we have a country, for instance, Iceland here, larger numbers, larger numbers for the Gini coefficient mean more unequal uh, societies. Okay, so here, for instance, Iceland, we had a value of 0.28 Gini coefficient in 2007, 0.24 in 2019. That means the income distribution has become more equal in that period. So we want to see whether these changes between 2007 and 2019, whether they are correlated with how rich a country is in 2019, how much they uh, have, uh, how much, how many CO2 emissions they have. So what we see, if we look at these results, these regression results is the following. We see that we actually don't get <coughs> any statistically significant coefficient. Neither of these two variables seems to be statistically significantly correlated with the change in GDP. So we have fairly substantial p-values here. So that means we're not really explaining any variation in the change of inequality with these two variables. Now, we said, or the question asks you, are you worried about any of these variables? So annual CO2 emissions and GDP per capita, there's something fundamentally different about these two countries. And let's see if we can discover that if we, uh, these two variables, if we were perhaps to just plot a scattered diagram between, between these two. Okay, so here's a scatter diagram for these two, for these two variables. And what you can see is that there's a huge amount of variation on that horizontal axis, with, um, which is the income variable, which we had before. Okay. But we also have here on the vertical axis, you see there's sort of a lot of action, a lot of countries down here. But then we have sort of two countries which are so have much higher CO2 emissions. So which countries are these? Let us reorder the data. I need to highlight the entire um, table here. Let us reorder the data according to CO2 emissions. Okay, now this is from smallest CO2 emissions. You're having some fairly small one here, that's 3 million tons, 7 million tons. Then we get, maybe easier if we actually change the format here and we allow uh, numbers. Um, no, numbers, number, ah, yeah, here, the thousand separator. So now we can see it better. You can see that our two biggest countries here, United States and India, they have much higher numbers of CO2 emissions. So basically what this variable in this case really captures is basically just the size of the country has basically nothing to do with CO2 emissions. It's just capturing the size of the country. Slightly scaled with the CO2 emissions, there may be countries which are of similar size but have very different CO2 emissions. But the main information in this variable is not CO2 emissions, but it's the size of the country. What we would much rather have is CO2 emissions per capita. 
that would have been a sensible variable to include. However, we don't have population data in the spreadsheet. You could, of course, get it so we could scale it as per capita and then we should include it. But as such, this variable doesn't make sense to be include in a regression model unless you want to capture the size of a country. So let's <coughs> rerun the regression model, but uh, not include that. Let's not include that size variable uh, masquerading as uh, CO2 emissions. So let's get rid of this um, red markers for now. And we'll go back to our regression tool. Regression, so GDP is in the H column. So if you go back to data regression, all your information is here. But in the input variable, we now only want, uh, sorry, here we really only want this. Uh, let's, let's delete this and then say, this is what we want. That's what we want as our explanatory variable. Everything else we leave. We can overwrite what we did before. And here is now our uh, our new regression. So we will still find in this case that it's not, you see that GDP variable still is statistically insignificant. So we are still not finding any significant correlation between the change in inequality and how rich a country is. So that means over the last sort of decade and a half, whether a country managed to reduce inequality or not was uncorrelated to how rich that country was. So with that, we have went through our, uh, through our exercise. Remember, you can download the data set from the link in the notes of this regression.